The most important part of it is to mobilize society to participate in, in the good cause that Nelson Mandela himself, um, you know, drove for the, his entire life. And um, now living his legacy means that we need to try and walk in his footsteps. And we are now mobilizing society and community, and I would imagine that the foundation has actually done that extremely and exceedingly well. Are we still emulating former President Mandela? Look, he, he remains a constant reminder of where we are supposed to be going. He remains a, a, a compass that we should actually um, look up to because at the end of the day, and you are correct, we should always uh, do that um, reality check as to whether. Indeed, we have, um, you know, um, railed off, uh, but I think there is still hope. Because when you still have the foundation, where you still have people who actually fork out money to support the foundation, where you still have people who partner with the foundation to get things done. We have seen in, in, in two instances in KZN during the, the, the riots where people have actually had gone off, but the, the foundation actually took it upon itself to remedy the situation um, in, for the victims and also with the floods. So a lot of that, look at early childhood education that we talk about. It's not early childhood education for the elite we're talking about, as Silo said, it's people that they would find in the middle of nowhere who actually have no access to facilities and be able to deliver that. You spoke about a critical moment for the country. Can you unpack that for us? Well, at a critical moment because it's when we actually need to actually reimagine the future. And it is in our hands, as Nelson Mandela had said. And we actually have to roll up our sleeves and, um, and do it because no one is going to do it for us. When I say there's not going to be a Clint Eastwood uh, with a pale horse uh, coming to rescue us uh, to get this house, our house in order, it is our duty to get our house in order. You went to the state capture. You touched a bit of state capture, even though you didn't uh, delve much into your presentation at the state capture. But the report is out. The final report is out. Do you feel vindicated? Indeed, to a very great extent, but um, I, I really look forward to uh, seeing more revelations also and um, that uh, also uh, perpetrators being taken to book. Where to from here as a country after the state capture in terms of uh, refocusing the country? I mean, right now we have this huge challenge of ESCOM. Look, for, for the wound to be healed, it needs to be opened. So one, we must be grateful that the wound has been opened and it is now our duty to sanitize the wound and sterilize the wound and then not put bandage on the wound also. If it needs surgery and if it needs amputation, that's what needs to, do, to, to be done. And I think we must be brave enough as a country uh, to face up to our challenges because no one is going to do it for us. And if we don't do it, we, we owe it to the next generation. That and finally, your party facing challenges. I know you are busy somewhere, but the reality is we know your background. Well, um, the, I think the challenge is also, again, uh, should actually serve as a, um, a wake-up call uh, because this was bound to happen at some point uh, because if you behave in a particular way, you do reach a point where you, you know, the, the, the moment where you smell the coffee and deal with it. And I hope that we will emerge uh, stronger from this and perhaps uh, yeah, even if we emerge smaller, but if we emerge stronger, all the better. And that's the final findings of the 380 pages of part five of the Zondo Commission report. As broken down and analyzed, uh, civil society and lobby groups claim the findings show that the state security agency spied, uh, set up surveillance and infiltrated civil society. They're calling on...